a play written by and directed by Bob Mayfield, Richfield Bone. And yes, please, if you would too, also turn off your cell phones. Please enjoy the show. There you are. I was beginning to get worried. Oh, you know these estate sales I get carried away. Looks like you've got quite the haul there. Yes, I so Oh, I know you do, dear. <laughs> They're so lively. What juicy little tidbits did you bring us today? Well, I got these antique just cloths and bath towels. And oh, look at this ancient iron. <laughs> but the prize of the day, cloisonne. Look at these beautiful pieces. They're lovely and the attention to detail is just amazing. They're exquisite. Are, are we a rich, huh? I believe it's just Oh, you know, I would never avoid my aunties. 
but I do have some amazing, exciting news for you. I've just gotten engaged. What? That's marvelous! Oh, and she is marvelous. She's smart, intelligent, motivated, and most of all, against all odds, she actually seems to love me. And she's dying to meet you. Very good. We can't wait. Tell us about her. Well, she's Russian. <laughs> And she lives here in Richfield. How nice, Russian. <laughs> yes, and she's so gorgeous. Mother used to make a nice borscht. Oh, I remember. But she's more of a burger and steak kind of gal. But, oh, I'm sorry, I'm even down in the park. I gotta run. But I, it's so good to see you, aunties. I love you. So see you later. Um, he's always running up somewhere. Yes, and welcome. Uh, 
Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, I've been all over this great uh, state of ours. I've run for governor, state representative, attorney general. Dog catcher? Uh, no. Now, I lost all of these elections, but I, but I did establish myself as a powerful voice in state politics. And I'm here to turn Richfield on its head, bring it back to its senses. Now, uh, might I leave you um, some brochures, uh, flyers, and I got a poster for your, uh, for your window if you care to. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet. <laughs> anything, anything you need to get the message out that Dennis Euclid is running for Richfield City Council. Well, that's very sweet. Let me tell you about the politics. But you're small business owners. You need somebody to represent you. Somebody who's willing to fight for you. Oh, don't fight, dear. And besides, we've run this store for decades, and I don't believe we've ever seen you in here. And now you want to fight for us? Yes, yes I do. And I'm tan, rested, and ready. <laughs> Check out how we ruffled some feathers around here. You know, they wouldn't even allow me in the July 4th parade. Why not? Well, it was September. <laughs> well, don't you want better, more efficient government? Well, you're better. Mine cannot be our better. Hmm. Well, I'll bring it right down to this. Our values have become so skewed, we may as well be in Russia or China. It's time to get back to grassroots. Tax cuts, deregulation, stop the caravans. No, no bike lanes in Richfield. No bike lanes. But most of all, <laughs> most of all, I'll take this message to my grave. We must have smaller government. Well, if it was one one city council person per city, government would be much smaller. No, no, no. You don't understand. You need somebody who's going to represent you, fight for you, the poor, pathetic little people. <laughs> Would you like some tea? Why, yes, thank you. <laughs> Mildred makes wonderful tea. Oolong to Jeerling. <laughs> oh, what's your favorite? I have just the blend for you. Sugar? Oh, sure, sure. Goes down much easier with sugar. There you thank are, you, dear. Thank you. So where have you been so far this well, morning? Well, uh, the massage parlor, uh, the music store, uh, the florist shop, the barber shop. Did you get a shave? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, the corner store, the hardware store. The liquor store. Uh, no, I don't do that. I did have a wonderful cup of coffee, however, at the old Liberty Theater. <laughs> and where are you off to next? Well, it's beginning to feel like lunchtime. I'm getting a little peckish. Is there a fine, uh, cheap restaurant here in downtown Richmond? Oh, there's Vinnie's. They have great pizza and fabulous stromboli. I would kill for a stromboli right now. Finney's, uh, and where's this Finney's at? Dear, do you actually live in Ridgefield? It's just a block up the way next to the library. Did you know we have a library? Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Um, but I think they need to privatize. Quit mooching off with tax dollars. We'll maintain your positive outlook on life. I shall. You know, again, this, this tea reminds me of something. Reminds me of how great America is. Why, there was the Boston Tea Party. There was the Great Tea Famine of 1876. <laughs> then there was the Republican Tea Party Revolution. <laughs> and then, I'm a little teapot, small and stout. <laughs> well, dear, come like this, and you will personally make America great again. Good. Now, I've You're sure? I can't leave some brochures, uh, flyers, uh, a poster for your window? Sorry, David. Uh, but 
said no. We just don't do politics. But I am happy you are running. It looks like you could use a little exercise. Um, very well. But well, when I am elected, I will break the chains that are keeping good, decent people like you down. <laughs> Now, where was this, uh, where was this Finney's again? Uh, two right at the door, about a hundred yards, just before the community center. Oh, where they have, uh, the council meeting. That's where they used to meet. Where is it now? Oh, they meet in the Rath. Nordstrom? <laughs> no, the old middle school. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Well, I'm off to Finney's. Ladies, thank you so much. The tea was wonderful. And I'm going to leave you with one last message. A vote for Dennis Eucalyptus is a vote for the sanity of the future. <laughs> the sanity of the future. That's a good slogan. Let me use it. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. It's me, Dennis Eucalyptus. I'm running for Richfield City Council. Does hey, come back here, you weasel. <laughs> Does he stand a chance of me? Not anymore. <coughs> How do I look, darling? Oh, fabulous. You're going to knock him dead. Aunties, <laughs> I present to you my intended, the one, the only, the lovely Erotica. <laughs> oh, my, she is quite stunning. Ironica, <laughs> interesting name. Well, it's Russian. <laughs> well, my parents emigrated here just after I was born, which is why I have no accent. We drank some Russian tea. Yes, I mean, no. Veronica and their family has a fascinating story. When they came to America without a dime, their father, Boris Pasanov, was an amazing construction worker, and he immediately found work. He was so good, he started his own business, and now is one of the most successful developers here in Clark County. Well, how sweet, and what do you do, dear? Oh, well, uh, I work for the Department of Justice, Intelligence, as a translator of Russian documents, <laughs> related to, well, many things, including the upcoming election. An extraordinary successful new Also, 
without even sharing it, we could never finish it. Lunch for me, we like to say. So he did pay you a visit. Yes, he was very aggressive about his run or canvas or whatever, and he kept on pecking at me as he talked. He was a pecker. Well, we just wanted to let you know. We probably weren't going to vote for him anyway. Well, there was this guy in Colorado who actually won an election after he died. They couldn't take his name off the ballot. Then maybe we will vote for him. Anyway, just wanted to let you know. What a shame. It is the poor strong Bowie. I hope he at least got a bite of it before he lost another election. <laughs> Soda? 
You got Diet Pepsi? No Pepsi Coke. Okay, whatever. It's a uh, bit. This whole town is an eyesore. It's a bit on the warm side. I'll put it in a glass. It's I don't nice. need a glass. But dear, this is a classy establishment, and it's our way to show off our fine stemware. All right. Thank you. Did you know the fellow? 
right now? Yes, yes, let me sweep up this mess. Well, it turns out we do have a few minutes to kill. Do you mind if we look around? What a couple of dingbats. <laughs> of course, since you have a few minutes to kill, would you like a cup of tea while you browse? No, thank you. We're headed to Myrtle's Tea House in a few. Oh, we love Myrtle. She's so wonderful. Oh, it's our first meeting there. We're so looking forward to it. Oh, fairy girl, look. There's a gaggle of our girls out on the street. Can you go gather them and lead them to Myrtle's? Oh, they do rather stand out. Dear, I know you'll be having wonderful tea soon, but just as I digest a wee bit of whiskey while you browse, hmm, I don't know. It aids digestion and cuts through the tea tannins. Oh, I haven't heard that. And tea sometimes does give me gas. <laughs> just a shot in one of our precious, precious shot glasses. A way to promote our classic collection. There is a method to our madness.
things. Yes, I know, and so do I, and so do I. But, Veronica, I have to be confessed. Craziness isn't just a family trait. It's in our DNA. My own mother died in a mental hospital. You die in Siberia? Oh, no, no, no. She was a hairdresser. So one day she was giving my uh, father a haircut, and then he cut a little too short. I was nine years old. I came home from school and she said, can you please dispose of your father? I ran out screaming out of the house. I went to the neighbor's house. And when, by the time the police arrived, that was the last time I ever saw my mother. My mother, my grandmother, the mother to my aunties, she also spent her last days in a mental institution. And she, well, at least she didn't kill anyone that, that I know of. Well, darling, that does explain your aunties. They're both batty. If they were in Russia, they would be in the gulag. Veronica, that's why I, I, I worry for myself. I don't feel crazy, but knowing our heritage, and this craziness could be in our blood. It's in our DNA. I, I don't know what we're going to do. James, the world is full of crazed people. I just don't know. I, I don't want to bring children into this world. Oh, I don't. I just don't know what to tell you. I'm here for you, though. You know, good Nick, I am here for you. Look suspicious. 
suspicious now, wouldn't it? Oh, look, dear, a piece of clothes made from Russia. We're thinking this would be the perfect wedding gift. Oh, shoot. I need it down in the city hall. But I'll be back, and just know this, I will always be here for you. Dear, we've been very careless. Yes. Um, I don't want to go to prison. I don't want to. I want to die here, not in some stinking, filthy prison. I don't want to go to prison either, dear, but I will not go to prison. I will die here. If you won't go to prison, neither will I, dear. They're coming to get us. I will not go to prison. Dear. I know. I have just enough for the two of us. Tea or whiskey? Whiskey, of course. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, thank you very much for joining us uh, on this, the third and final in the trilogy of uh, murders in Richfield. Uh, I do more, but I think I've already killed everybody. In the so, um, just want to say that this cast and crew has just been wonderful. We've got some new people here. They've all contributed to, to every piece here. So, it's, I'm going to go ahead and start introducing. Uh, first, where's my, um, is she hiding? Maureen. <laughs> she, 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 she really is. She is kind of... uh, Maureen was the soundboard. Yes. There she is. She was uh, an understudy for the corpse. <laughs> uh, she did the choreography for the dance tune. <laughs> Thank you, Maureen. And then we have, uh, new to our group, uh, Jane. Um, uh, I, I knew Jane from the winery, and one day she mentioned that she had started a Little Orphan Annie or something? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she didn't start. Uh, so the next time I saw her, I handed her a script, and I said, uh, learn this part. And she did, so she was, uh, uh, Jane. <laughs> Jane, are you familiar? Jane, Oh, and of course, Molly Malone. Molly's been with us. It's not Molly Malone. It's actually Jan Day. And she plays Molly Malone. She'll always be Molly Malone. Alive, alive, oh. Let's see. Let's go to uh, this young lady, Lee Notnaris, who. Uh, <laughs> Lee just told me that stage uh, that uh, she's going to start a chapter of the Red Hat Society here. Uh, there was a sign-up sheet back, uh, uh, back there. So she did a wonderful job whooshing her way through this. Uh, a big hand for Lee. Uh, Lee Ironica. Uh, Ironica is really Lori Lanza. Uh, I wrote, I, I wrote a little bit, uh, a bit for a Russian wife, and the first time she spoke, she did that Natasha Fatale, and I rewrote the entire, uh, just, just for her. Uh, boots on the ground. Uh, uh, Lori Lanza, please. Oh, let's go down to uh, Rachel Love, Denise Clemenson who happens to be uh, uh, the daughter of Lori Lanza. <laughs> and uh, continues to do a great job, so we will, uh, wherever it's next, do that. In the meantime, I'll be kicking on all of you. <laughs> our troop last our last play uh, Chris um, did the uh, piano work for us in the sound house yeah did the sound for us and he said he might want to uh, be part of the play well he, he was he did a great job uh, and now I want to introduce Chris B the rapper <laughs> Crazy guy. Um, I, 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 I knew Nick through his wife, Meredy. Meredy, are you out there somewhere? There you are. Um, uh, uh, and I knew he. Uh, <laughs> I knew he wrote a motorcycle, and I, I'd written this part, and I, I don't know my motorcycle terminologies. So I was going to ask Dick if. Um, if he could give me a hint. Well, he just took over the entire show. We couldn't stop him. That, that, that motorcycle, all he just made all of that is, is the art. Any of those real rubbish. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Dick Levy, and then of course he played uh, uh, Bert Dan, I gotta say that correctly. He's the real horse and I killed him. Um, uh, Dick Levy, please. Patricia Thompson, 
Carrie Marshall, uh, whatever I do, whatever I write next, you're going to be part of it. <laughs> Uh, I think that's it. Did I cover everybody? Officer, so. Officer, Dan. Yeah, yeah. so, is he here? Yeah. Of course. I'm Bob. Woo! So, uh, how about one more big round of applause for this fabulous group of people? For, for coming. Um, all we get is uh, the, the laughter and the applause. Uh, even though uh, Crispy wanted me to talk to his agent about it. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to happen. So thank you again for joining us. Really appreciate it. Uh, Come and see us. Uh, we'll be back. Thank you.